Uh, welcome today to the workshop. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about intrinsic design, building responsive WordPress websites. I'm Brian Gardner, developer advocate at WP Engine. And this slideshow and the blueprint that will be shown at some point, both uh, built with Frost WordPress theme. It's our block-based theme that we used uh, previously for experimental purposes, but it is now production ready and available on WordPress.org. Uh, so feel free to grab it there. Uh, we are using the purple uh, style variation. Frost normally comes in blue, but we're going to use purple for this. And so I'm just going to get started and take it away. So a uh, quick timeline on responsive web design. Many, many years ago, uh, there was a thing where we just designed for desktop. Uh, mobile really wasn't even a thing back in the day. Uh, devices were so small and didn't even uh, have the capabilities of uh, showcasing full pixels and all of that. And so kind of like there was no consideration for mobile, right? Kind of the whatever dude uh, sort of a thing. And then time evolved a little bit and uh, we still designed for desktop, but then there was a plugin in WordPress space. Uh, for those who remember, it was called WP Touch. It was kind of one of those like really ugly looking things that everybody had on their website. Uh, so it was a plugin that you activated the website itself and the theme had no considerations for mobile responsiveness. You just activated the plugin and somehow it was smart and new if you were viewing on a device to show this version of the plugin, which uh, from a design perspective was very flat. It had nothing to do with the look of your theme, but at least it was something, right? And so fast forward a little bit further beyond that, once the plugin kind of became antiquated uh, and technology itself uh, evolved, uh, we still designed for desktop, but we were like, hey, this new thing called media queries, which is part of CSS, uh, we were able to define how things looked on mobile via media queries. Traditionally, we'd see that at the bottom of the style sheet. Sometimes you could find that in line, depending on how the theme author decided to do it. Uh, so we had media queries to handle, handle mobile, basically said on desktop, load it all. But if it's viewed on mobile, make these sort of concessions. Uh, shortly kind of after that, things evolved and the devices, the number of devices, the, the sizes of devices, the manufacturer of devices became mainstream. And, and I think it was maybe once we hit past 50% of uh, web browsing happened on mobile devices. Uh, we did a thing sort of where we inverted design into a point where we would design mobile first and then use the media queries to handle how desktop was viewed. Uh, it was a little bit more of a uh, step towards what we're sort of talking about today, sort of not, this, this idea of intrinsic web design, which really is sort of like the utopia of uh, design and layout and content and stuff like that. Uh, we've got a little unicorn there to show that that's essentially where we want to get to. Uh, having a design that doesn't matter what device it's viewed on. Uh, it seems very utopian, uh, really hard to understand conceptually how it's done, especially with sophisticated websites. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what intrinsic web design is, knowing we're not there yet, but at least sort of having the end point or the goal line of where we want to get to. And so let's talk about what is intrinsic web design. Uh, I'm going to read this here. It's a modern methodology that allows web content to naturally adapt to various screen sizes from mobile. Sorry, the poll popped right up. <laughs> uh, from mobile to desktop, rather than creating multiple designs for different devices, intrinsic web design leverages CSS grid and Flexbox to resize and rearrange elements fluidly based on available space. I'll take a break there. And if you think about mockups you've ever delivered to a client or uh, you know, if you look at Figma of, of designs, there was always sort of like, this is what it looks like on the web. And then to the right side or the left side of it would be this like tall skinny version of this is what we want it to look like, um, on like an iPhone or a mobile view. And the idea behind intrinsic web design is it doesn't matter. And there's no need to show different designs. Cause you know, again, in sort of a unicorn fashion, it all just works. Uh, it's similar to the dynamic fluidity of water. Intrinsic web design is adapting to various container shapes where the design dynamically modifies web content to suit any screen dimension. That's a mouthful. It's uh, really sometimes hard for me to fundamentally understand the idea of uh, images being served up a certain way in rel relative to content and there's just, as WordPress website builders, we know there's a lot of caveats and a lot of catches and gotchas. Um, and so 
I think intrinsic web design is great on paper. It's going to be really difficult to pull off 100% of the way. Um, but let's talk about that a little bit more specifically around WordPress. Uh, but before we get there, let's figure out, uh, let's let's learn how uh, intrinsic web design came about. Uh, so during a presentation in April of 2018, uh, Jen Simmons at an event uh, apart did a talk called Everything You Know About Web Design Just Changed. And so she introduced the concept of intrinsic web design. And this is sort of what she said. This is a quote from her talk. Intrinsic web design is a name that I gave to this new era because I think we're in a new area of layout design. We had the debate between fluid web design and fixed with web design, and you didn't have to start over and define everything. And responsive was that kind of a word. So in between just desktop only and this idea of intrinsic web design was this sort of idea of uh, mobile responsive, mobile first, sort of fluid kind of whatever. Uh, but she says, we need a new word for a new era where we can say, oh, it's not that float based thing where everything is set in widths using percentages, it's this new set of technologies. And so she coined the term intrinsic web design. Obviously, we're five years later. So while it has caught on some, I, I still think there's there's just a lot of sort of learning and technology that needs to catch up to this idea because on paper, it, it it's really great. The idea of it, it alters how we uh, as builders build things. It alters uh, people who have businesses and want things laid out a certain way. And so it's really, to be perfectly honest, even for me, it's really, really high level. And sometimes I feel like it's just the overall idea. I watched the talk, it's kind of above my pay grade. I'm like, wow, this is just really, really deep and really profound. And there's a lot of concessions and considerations that need to be made. And so in the meantime, until we can get to that point, or unless we have tools that help us get there quicker, uh, let's talk about what this specifically means with WordPress and the controls and settings we have now. So uh, we are, uh, as Josepha says, five years into a 10-year plan with this whole sort of evolution of the Gutenberg editor, uh, what was Gutenberg, now just the block editor. Uh, and, and while we have certainly seen it uh, evolve and change and become an advanced design tool, let's face it, there's still some design work uh, that needs to be done, some work that needs to be designed for designers. Um, and so I think what we should do is like, let's take a, take a look of where we're at uh, and see how we can harness what's available to us already and emulate this intrinsic web design and at a minimum, you know, allow ourselves to uh, design better, ex uh, expedite workflow, and just bring us closer to this sort of forward thinking approach. So part of uh, what we're going to talk about today are um, four things that are sort of available to us in WordPress that allow us to get to this point. Uh, the first one is the sort of settings and the controls that are part of WordPress core already that come shipping with uh, WordPress core. And so when it comes to responsive design, uh, some of the blocks like rows and columns and navigation and images and buttons have sort of baked in CSS that handles the way they respond on mobile devices. Uh, one of the caveats there is that WordPress itself defines how that works and to what extent the media queries kick in. And so um, as always, we can always override that. And so there's a little bit of work there if you wanted to change that. Uh, fluid spacing and fluid typography are two huge settings and features that are available, <clears throat> excuse us, uh, available to us today. Uh, I am huge proponent of both of these things. And I think uh, once people understand the power of fluid spacing and fluid typography, it gets us 80 to 90% of the way there. Uh, and then lastly, and I use this uh, often, uh, the idea of utility classes, like, okay, what's not a WordPress core, what's not part of a fluid spacing or typography thing, and what is sort of more of a, a, a custom implementation or something that's not available to us already? How can we still sort of set up a system that allows for... Um, sort of this, this striving of intrinsic web design and things just working out of the box. Before I go any further, before I'm gonna go into the fluid spacing, um, do we have any questions or anybody who just wants to kind of bring something up around what I've said to date? I don't have the chat open, so. No questions in the chat that I'm seeing. Perfect, cool. All right, so, so fluid spacing. Uh, it's almost exactly as it sounds. 
the idea here is that um, fluid spacing utilizes the clamp function, um, the, the clamp CSS function to define three different parameters. Uh, so I'll get to clamp here in a second. There's the minimum, the preferred, and the maximum value. Uh, specifically around Frost, Frost theme is set up with spacing um, to have five steps. And so that's kind of what I have in parentheses. And uh, WordPress has what's called a step system that can be baked into theme JSON where you define the steps. As you see in the screenshot, uh, there's a little toggle. I'll uh, go into the back end here and show an example of what this looks like. Primarily it's on padding and margin and the dimension controls. You can see here, I'm gonna slide this toggle. So it goes from zero to the, the t-shirt sizing. And so I'll show how that's defined. And what that does is it sort of gives users like a preset step system where you can define as a theme, how much each step is. And so uh, in addition to having that, you can also unlock these and define them however you want. Like if you want to hard code the pixel values, uh, you can do that. Um, and again, I'll go into code to show you how each of these um, units are allowed. So you can use percentage and EMs and REMs and VW and VH, all of which are a little more uh, sort of lenient towards the idea of sort of the fluid look. And so this is how this uh, looks Again, just kind of going through. Hey, Brian, there's a clarification in the chat. Uh, intrinsic web design, is that more or less fluid design? Yeah, the idea fluid design is, um, so fluid spacing, fluid typography are parts of the overall idea of fluid design where the whole thing just works. I think uh, I made a comment earlier about sort of like water kind of falling through like open areas. And again, as, as we are practical builders, like, and we think of things in floating and kind of historical ways we used to build the idea of like a true intrinsic design um, is great for like maybe the idea of like a few percent of like sort of custom personal sites, but then you just go into anything that's more mainstream or highly trafficked and, you know, dare we install a couple plugins and things can fall apart pretty quickly. Uh, and and that is just the reality of the world we live in. So, um, but for the most part, yes, it just works. Uh, so I'm going to kind of just go into the code here for uh, fluid spacing. Uh, I am in the Frost theme JSON file. I've kind of pulled this out so we could look specifically to see how this works. And so uh, inside of the setting and the spacings, we have what's called these spacing sizes, where similar to font sizes where you can register sort of what uh, those look like. I've gone with Frost to just use the t-shirt sizing. So we've got five different steps, extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. Uh, and of course you have to name them with a slug and that slug is used down here at the bottom. You can see the output of uh, registering these is you get some preset variables, which then can be used anywhere as well. If you have either anywhere else in theme JSON or uh, inside of a style sheet, you can use these variables in those locations. And so really what we're talking about here is um, setting the value using clamp, as I mentioned earlier. So in this case, and this is sort of where the fluid kicks in, uh, you've got the minimum, the maximum, and the preferred value. So for instance, like if you have something set to medium spacing, you're basically saying, I want that spacing to be um, six VW, the, the viewport width. Uh, don't ever let it get lower than 40 pixels and don't let it ever get higher than 60 pixels. And so I'll uh, pop open um, the, do a demo here of what we're talking about. Let me pull this out. And so this is uh, a link that goes to sort of an example of this in action. So I'm going to scroll down here at the bottom because the bigger the spacing, the easier it is to see it respond. So this last box I've on purpose uh, chosen to give it hard-coded values of 100 pixels, which is the same as this extra large above it. This is to just sort of demonstrate the difference in how this breaks down. So let me move this over. So as I move my screen, you can kind of see and I'll do this. You can kind of see how proportionately that spacing looks really good. And then at the bottom, you can see what happens when the numbers are hard coded, that hundred sticks. And when you're using things like an iPhone, having a hundred pixels on left or right really takes up 
a lot of real estate. And so using sort of this <clears throat> step system, uh, which says, hey, go down to like 40 or 50 pixels when you shrink a phone down, uh, that's a really, really helpful thing. And so once again, I'll just... Uh, You know, this is again what happens, and so you can see everything else feels a little more proportionately in scale. There's a question, Brian. Yes. Why is Clamp using VW as preferred and not VH if we're controlling the height? Uh, well, technically, the choice is good question. The choice is relatively arbitrary because in a sense you're doing both height and width because that percentage is being used top, bottom, left, and right. Um, so again, viewport width, again, you could probably do it however you want and maybe even a percentage based works also. So it's really kind of six to one half dozen to another. Uh, in Frost, I've just using viewport width again because as you're shrinking the screen down, not only left and right is is really more of what gets uh, reduced uh, in terms of like the width and the considerations rather than the height. So I've chosen to just use width, but height would work too. There's okay. another question if yep. you're, uh, okay. Uh, is there one sizing to use overall or do different elements do better with different size types? For example, a font, REM or images VH? It's like Laura knew what question I was going to talk about because uh, fluid typography is I use pixels for that middle thing. Um, and again, I'll get to that in a second. So your um, Laura, I will get to that. That's the next part of my presentation. Uh, I see Perfect. Elisa, you're using a clamp widget to determine sizing. Uh, I'm not sure about what you mean by clamp widget. Um, Like, um, I thought at one time you showed us that there was a website that you were using to determine different clamp numbers, like what, how to do it. Uh, I, mm, I no? don't, rec I don't recall that. I, I, so you just have been playing around and figuring out what works for you. And then you go from there. Yeah. For the most part, it, it I, I start with like, what would I want my hard coded pixel okay. value to be? And then I usually kind of go above and below that to some extent. Um, you know, for instance, like if a hero area, uh, is going to have a top and bottom pixel of a hundred, I don't want it to ever get lower. I don't want it to do like a, like 10 because then it's like too skinny. Right. And so like, you have to kind of just eye it and just figure out, uh, what works best, you know, and, and for the most cases, like it's almost double, like you see, like there's 50, 80, 60, hundred. So it's like, there's like a range, there's nothing scientific. It's really choose your own. Um, and you can see down here on the small size, I don't even have anything, just 20 pixels is 20 pixels regardless, uh, mm. because there's no need to go larger or smaller. Um, okay, thank uh, you. perfect, Michael. Thank I you. I thought for there, I could have sworn there was a website to determine clamp, but maybe I'm just imagining things. There well, is one there that, it is uh, that Michael, Michael sent yep. it. <laughs> maybe we were talking about it and someone brought the link up, but I don't think I ever have used that. So, um, <laughs> Uh, and then, excuse me, back in the, the settings for units here on the spacing, this right here, this set of code, as you can see from my screen, this is where you determine what you can allow users to see in the actual dashboard itself, like the editor itself. So like if you wanted to hide pixels and say, hey, my whole system's just, you know, fluid by nature, you would remove the pixels um, like that. And then these are the only options that would show. So... All right, so that's sort of the way fluid spacing works. And I'm gonna go on to uh, the next one. Uh, so this is clamp. Again, this is sort of like just a visual sort of definition of using the clamp. Clamp works for things like font size. It also works for padding. It's really just a range. Uh, and uh, prior to, I'll get here in a second, prior to um, actual WordPress fluid typography, uh, I used in Frost, I used the clamp to determine font sizing in the same way that we did padding. I said, hey, at a minimum, because I had created a theme that had like 120, a huge, huge, huge text, just kind of to do a design thing, uh, not thinking about it. And then I went and shrunk the screen down and it like completely broke the screen because it was loading 180 pixel size. And I was like, oh, I got to figure out how to reduce this. And so I did a little research. And at the time, fluid typography was not part of WordPress core. 
And so I use the font size, like we see here, this clamp, which is basically make the font four times the viewport width, no greater than 48, but no smaller than 24. So that's basically your range, right? 24 to 48. Uh, and so that's um, sort of the, uh, the clamp. Now, fluid typography, as I mentioned, is a little bit different now because uh, I can't remember what version in WordPress it shipped, but um, WordPress built into it uh, the fluid typography a sort of methodology. Fluid typography, as we see here, is the adaption of font sizes within the viewport with, as a result, fonts can smoothly scale down a minimum and maximum size, creating uniformity and optimal communication here for benefits. Uh, obviously for, uh, in this case, readability is everything, right? Like if you have an iPhone and you're looking at font sizes that are like 24 pixels, that's just really too big. And so the idea here is what you see on desktop does not need to be the same size as what you see on your phone because it's just, it's a different experience. And so the font adapts to the screen size here. Uh, it's better for user experience. It helps make content more accessible. Uh, maybe you overall your fonts have gone down in size, which makes things easier to navigate, easier to see. Uh, maybe you're not scrolling as much. Uh, it's good for flexibility too, because you could be uh, do things on desktop that then respond nicely down to mobile. And so as a designer who likes to do things with type, that's really interesting to me where I could, you know, do like this really big hero type, but then on a mobile device, I iPad or an iPhone, it just, it shrinks down nicely. So it fits in context and still has the same effect, but it's nowhere near as big as it would be on the desktop. Uh, and as we see also just less need for media queries prior to the clamp idea, it would be like, I'm setting this H1 at 96 pixels. And then I'd go down in the media query and say, if it's at this screen size, make it this size. And like, it would almost be maybe 20, 30, 40 lines of CSS. Cause you want to kind of shrink it down, but there was no fluid way to do that. So uh, the clamp functionality gets, gets us there. And so I'm going to go into uh, the next screen. This is uh, also taken out of the theme JSON file where um, the font sizes are set inside of the typography settings. Uh, first thing is WordPress has this functionality baked in where you have to set fluid to true. If you don't, none of this works. Uh, you could just <clears throat> register your, excuse me, register your normal font sizes. And you'll see here, similar to like the padding, like the smaller sizes, there's no need to sort of deviate. 16 and 16 is fine. Uh, but as you start to define larger sizes, uh, as an example, um, you use this fluid uh, code here. And it says, and you're setting the min-max. So it's basically light clamp, but you're just doing it in a different way inside of theme JSON. And so like, as you can see, as you get further up, for instance, down here, I've got 72 pixels max, but I want it to go down as low as 48. And WordPress um, has its own calculations now that sort of result in what we see down here. This is the CSS variables. And so I don't know who's done it, but WordPress in sort of this uh, ideal um, sizing sort of has a calculation. I don't know what the mathematics is behind it. I'm sure it's proven somewhere. Uh, but it kind of determines for you what's the optimal size within the range that you've already set. And so looking at it from the front end, uh, here's an example, and I'll go to the larger sizes so we can see. Uh, in Frost, 16 to 72 pixels is set in the theme. And then I put a little separator here. Uh, these two down here are uh, just hard-coded values. But WordPress recently shipped its own version where it handles uh, font sizes that are big, even if the theme itself doesn't register it. So um, I will pop this out and we can kind of watch this respond. Now notice, and I'll show here in a second what's getting better. Uh, notice these two in particular. I think the mathematics was off originally when they shipped WordPress 6.2. Uh, and so watch as I reduce this. It doesn't really go down much, which means it could present problems on mobile. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the Gutenberg plugin just so we can see the difference in where it's at now. I'm going to pull this back out. So somewhere along the way, watch how these respond now. They've, they've got the mathematics dialed in a whole lot better to where uh, proportionately uh, that 
treatment is much better. And the bigger the size that you get, the more it comes down. So I can confirm that uh, the Gutenberg plugin, which will ultimately arrive in WordPress 6.3, will have the better calculation for the larger sizes. So. There's a question in the chat, uh, Brian. Yes. Why did the first two sections in the code uh, say fluid false? Uh, yes. Okay. So I'm going to go back up here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, because they're, they're small enough to where you don't need fluid, the fluid treatment basically, or at least I've determined that. And you could, I guess, go from 16 down to 14. When you get to that point, it's kind of, it's harder to even see the differences, like the larger the font size, the more you want that to degrade. And so, uh, I have just arbitrarily chosen on the smaller sizes, 16 to, is, you know, 16 and 18 and 18. And then this way. Uh, the medium goes down to 18. So it still feels like it's kind of incremental in size, even on a mobile device. So you still got 16, 18, 18, and then 20, 24, 30, and 36, and so on. And so once uh, WordPress, and the reason why um, all of these sort of custom sizes, like this max 36, 38, it's just to have, um, at the time, it was to supply people who were using it a way to um, have larger fonts that would actually uh, respond fluidly. Now that WordPress has that sort of baked in and once it ships in 6.3, sort of this adjusted mathematics, um, I may, and I have to find out whether or not th this might break things, but, um, some of these custom sizes, these larger sizes, I may just remove from the theme because it's not necessary because WordPress will handle it at that point. And even if you type in a number that's not seen here, like 71 pixels or whatever, 69 to some sort of off off number, WordPress will handle anything at any point. So it's really becoming a baked in uh, feature set that no matter what size you use or hard code or pick, uh, WordPress will have sort of a way to respond for you. So you don't have to like do like a preset thing that we've got here. Utility class is sort of the fourth way we can handle uh, doing responsive design within WordPress, right? So WordPress core has its own sort of baked in things. We can do things through the theme mainly through fluid spacing, fluid typography, and how we set up that system. And then there's a handful of things that just don't work unless you do something with it. Uh, and so I'm gonna show you an example. I've written this into some of my themes. Uh, and this is something uh, that I, you know, we talk about a lot internally. We hear the community talk about um, certain other themes or page builders have responsive controls and everybody wants to control uh, every sort of element by, you know, choosing how it displays on what device and sort of all these other things. And so uh, utility classes is my personal way to sort of uh, fix this. And so let's look at the Frost website. We've got basically a row here in the header, We've got site logo, you've got menu, and you've got this button, just the look we wanted to achieve. Now, without any utility class, if you break this down, uh, the mobile breaks down, but because the button's still there, it gets really congested up in the header when you shrink it down into mobile. And so what I've done, and I will inspect this here, is on the button, I've added this class called is style hidden mobile. And so uh, watch what happens when I pull this out and reduce the screen. We'll see that that button goes away on mobile. And so you get this traditional layout. Now, one of the sort of the gotchas that doesn't exist, uh, the WordPress navigation block allows for some blocks, social icons being one of them, to be part of the navigation. So when you click this button, uh, maybe your social icons show up down here at the bottom. Uh, the button is not one of them. And th for this reason, I want to help make that change because as I'll show, let me turn off the CSS if I can find it. Where we got here. If I can find the CSS. Ah, trying to figure out where. No, it's not going to play with nicely with me. Wanted to show you what happens to that button and how it looks if that's not there. Nonetheless, it, again, it, it sort of breaks the layout. And so in this case, because I want to design this way on desktop, I've chosen to use a utility class for this. Uh, as an example, I had mentioned earlier, sort of this alternating left, right. You can see this is using columns. 
And so like, if you break this down on mobile, this would go first, this would go second. But then when you get down here, because this is on the left, this shows up first and it just kind of breaks the design. Uh, so I've added a utility class also that results in sort of something like this, where you've got, you know, image, then text, image, then text, image, then text. And that's kind of what you want. Uh, otherwise, it sort of inverts the order. And so uh, that's sort of another one of those doesn't quite work as we want it to yet. Um, so reading, right? Because sharing is caring. We like to, to share links. Sam has a, a couple of a uh, handful of links here, uh, one of which I've written a, a piece on the, our builder's website. Uh, and then we've got a, a link to the video that Jen talked about with Intrinsic Web Design, her uh, event apart talk. Uh, Justin Tadlock from uh, formerly of WP Tavern, but now works at Automatic. He's written a piece called Intrinsic Design, Theming and Rethinking How to Design with WordPress, um, which really sort of, for me at least, sort of kicked off this whole idea of, okay, how do we set up a system that works uh, a lot more out of the box than I think a lot of people think or realize is possible within WordPress? And then Mike McAllister, who uh, used to work with us here at WP Engine, is on his own now, also sort of wrote a piece. So you can see a lot of people are talking about this now, like, hey, WordPress is getting there. Like, how do we like expand the controls to like do more things with the responsiveness in mind? Um, but as I've said a hundred times, and we'll go down saying a hundred more, uh, fluid spacing and typography, I think handle most of what we're talking about when it comes to setting up a system that just sort of works, we'll call it intrinsically. Uh, you just don't have to think about it. People can select a spacing step for their padding and it just, it responds. It's just, it, the system's built in. It's the theme author or the, the custom theme builder uh, can set that up as they wish. They don't have to use the numbers that I use in Frost uh, if they prefer a different unit set or something like that. But I think, I think we're getting there. I, it's going to be a long time until everything just works perfectly. I don't know that it ever will because custom always brings into the picture. Um, just elements that are just hard to account for or need to be accounted for on a custom basis, whether it's custom CSS or plugin or something like that. But uh, I do think WordPress itself has done a lot of work to get us to a point where out of the box, things can work a lot better than they used to. So uh, that is the end of the presentation. Uh, I wanna talk if we are able to spend some time talking about uh, WordPress, projects, how we can use these features, how we do use these features. Uh, but before that, I'm going to do one more quick demo to show everything sort of in action. Uh, this is the Frostscape Blueprint. This is my fun project that I'm working on, uh, where I'll just scroll top to bottom. A lot of it's using Frost patterns, but it's kind of an opinionated sort of sample site uh, I've created that might be available someday. Uh, so we can kind of see what this kind of complex layout looks like with WordPress core features um, in a responsive format. So uh, that being said, I'm going to reduce the screen to show what this would look like in mobile view. And you can see this font goes down nicely. We've got our menu. Uh, those four boxes that are columns stack nicely. The padding inside of them uh, responds a little better because if, if you had a hard-coded padding value, uh, that padding, this would all just be more in the center. It would be hard to read. And of course, we've got these columns, these alternating sections stacked nicely. The call to action sort of allows the text on top of the buttons. Uh, the four column team section works well. And then the footer. And again, there, there's probably some settings, you know, oh, it would be nice to, you know, center it all on mobile. So there are some things that maybe we could ask for. Uh, best way to do that is to go into the Gutenberg GitHub uh, repository, create an issue, feature um, request or suggestion where we say, hey, maybe there's an option in a, you know, X, X block to allow for things to get centered or whatnot. So, but I would say, you know, again, none of this is using any custom CSS. And so out of the box, it's just using kind of the system that Frost sets up. And so that is what we have. I will stop sharing my screen uh, for now. If we want to field questions, I'd love to talk more about this and uh, go from there.
Yep. There's actually, there's a couple of questions. Um, yep. I saw one a little higher up about if you remove the na- the max number from theme JSON of frost, and that's used as the parent theme, what will happen to display to the display if the font slug is no longer available? Is there a fault, some sort of fallback? Uh, I don't know. And I think I made the comment that I have to test that because if a, my guess is that we, I might be in trouble <laughs> because if a, um, if it's using a, uh, a non-specific uh, value for the font size, it means it's being controlled by the class itself. And if you remove the class, it may either go down to like default text size, which is not a great update methodology. Like if you just update the theme and all of a sudden all your big text becomes really, really small, that's a problem. Um, so we might be um, seeing those values um, staying in Frost. I think the minimalist would say, get rid of them. Moving forward on new themes, I will. Um, but I'm certainly not in the the market to break sites. And so we won't remove anything that will break sites. So um, again, without testing, but I think I've accidentally tested a few times. I don't think that's going to work as I hope. And I think we'll have to keep that in there. And that's okay because uh, it just means that those values won't use the baked in WordPress uh, mathematics to determine what the font sizes are. But uh, we've done the work already for that to be good anyways. Awesome. Uh, another question is curious if variable fonts can be used in fluid typography too. So say you want to, tra- to, to, to transition from, uh, you know, book to bold on a smaller screen. Could you do that? I don't out of the box. No, uh, I, you know, a weight is a weight. Now I realize that variable weights in themselves, <sighs> There's probably a system and it's a good, uh, Brian, it's a really good, interesting sort of like use case, like experiment to say this might require immediate queries to say like uh, this weight uh, is 500, uh, 500 like on desktop view. But if you like go down to like a smaller size, like make that weight, if you're using like a variable name, make that weight down 400, like font weight 400 or something like that. Um I don't think that WordPress out of the box has the capability to do that. Just going to be too many uh, opportunities for things not to work properly. But I think that you could probably set up a system in which that works. Uh, okay. I'm going to read Mark's question. We've been having trouble overwriting the default block app on certain blocks. The code generated seems to revert to the default, which means if we present a blocks margin, doesn't override the block gap without knowing a specific case. It's hard to say, but gap tends to designate. Yeah, Michael's right. Uh, block gap was one of those things that when it first came out, I remember having conversations with Nick Diego saying, what is this and how does it work? And he's like, block gap will change your life. And I said, no, it won't. I don't know. I don't get it. I'll just hard code my own <laughs> gap stuff. Um, I've become a huge fan of block gap. There are some annoyances where it like shows up on spacers, which means like a 70 pixel spacer block becomes a hundred depending on what your block gap is. And so you have to zero things out. Uh, and so I think block gap can cause problems. I've seen people, um, fail to put it on template parts. And then all of a sudden they're like, why is this extra spacing down at the bottom and stuff like that? So I get it because I work in all of this often and I know how to get around it. Um, and I, I've tried to do the work inside of my themes like frost where I'll zero out groups on purpose because I know that it's going to inherit that block gap and people may not know how to change it. And so um, my guess is, and again, yes, not knowing that the true use case. um, And yes, Sam, I'll get to that in a sec. Um, It's hard to say. So block gap is, uh, as Michael calls out, it is the spacing that happens within blocks. So if you're, let's just say you've got like a columns block and you've got three columns of whatever. Right, uh, the theme and side of theme JSON, you can specify what this universal gap is, and that could be overridden on an individual basis. And so, for instance, um, and the best way for me to do this would be to pop open, uh, and I'll share my screen here in a second. Let me just go to my right page uh, because visuals are good. Great question, by the way. Okay, so I'm going to go into list view so we can see what. We're, well, actually, maybe not. Might be easier to see. Okay, so I'm going to select down here at the little 
thing. So we're inside of the columns block. And inside of that, you can see there's spacing here in between each column. So this is the block, and these are the elements inside of it. And so block gap defined by Frost is just set to 30 pixels. So what that does is anytime there's like in between blocks, it adds a block, this gap of 30 pixels. Uh, and so what there is a setting here, and sometimes it's hidden. You have to uh, go under dimensions and find block spacing. Even though You can see that that same uh, responsive fluid spacing scale we have down here. You can see I want to set it to zero. For some reason, you want to have everything uh, collapse down so that there's no spacing. You set it to zero. And what that does is it changes the gap in between each of the things. Now, everybody said, well, this works great, but like maybe like on desktop, I want to set it a certain way. But like on mobile, I don't want that much space because now it's adding all this space when I don't want it to. If you um, unlink it, you have the option now to specify horizontal and vertical. So for instance, maybe on vertical, you want them closer together. So you would reduce that down to whatever value. And so what this does is, um, and again, uh, I don't know the use case exactly, but um, so that that's sort of an example. Uh, I'll, I'll go into So this is the home page. And so technically, um, each one of these layers in the home page is like set in a group. Now, uh, so like this second group, each of these groups technically get block gap applied. So in essence, in between this black section up here, which is this first group and the second group, there's actually 30 pixels that are added because it's just saying, hey, here's a bunch of elements within a group. Uh, we want to add this block gap. And so when people don't know that that's there, they're like, hey, this group right here, I want this 100 pixel padding at the top. But what's happening is uh, if you don't have any, like mar if you don't zero out the margin, you get an additional 30. And so I've gone in here and set this top to zero. Now you can see what will happen if I remove this, see how it jumps down. And that's because it says, okay, well, you don't want block, you don't want to zero anything out. So we're going to add the gap that you've decided it should be. And so it's one of those things that I think people are starting, starting to figure out, but can sometimes be annoying or trip people up if you don't know what to do or how to kind of get out of it. So hopefully, hopefully that helps. Uh, looking at your comments, let me just read up really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. There's some manual overrides and I think I even, um, inside of, and I think Mark, uh, Mark, this might be, and I'm gonna share my screen again, just because this is easy to see. There are some instances where you're like, things aren't just working. And so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of theme JSON where there's a couple of instances like in that spacer block where like it keeps inheriting the block gap. And even if you don't use important and you have zero, I think this is what you're talking about. The difference between margin top and margin block start, there's like some specificity things there. And so like I've had to include important here just to completely own, hey, spacer gets no gap applied to the top of it. So maybe that's something that you're talking about. Again, I, I need to know the use case. Uh, but there's been a few other instances where I've had to use, um, I think the template parts to uh, wherever the template part, yeah. Like, like the, so the template parts, mainly header and footer. Uh, if this was taken out uh, in between the content area and the footer itself would have that gap also. So that 30 pixels or whatever the theme specifies. And so I would. I was always like, how do I get rid of this extra space? And where's this extra space coming from? Well, it's coming from the block gap that's being applied to the top of the footer template part. And so if you've set this to zero, it's just never a problem. So again, these are things that I come across often because I'm playing around and experimenting and building all of this stuff, but um, probably some helpful things for people who don't understand it or don't understand how to fix things yet. Yes, Mark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Reach into the choir. Like you, you fix it one way and then it causes another problem. It's a story of web development, right? Um, and yeah, there's 
lots of ways to fix things, lots of ways to break things. And so uh, it's just a lot of trial and error and using the Chrome inspector tools or dev tools or whatever. Okay, any other questions? Something that I may have missed. Um, I realize responsive WordPress is like a big thing and there's a lot of considerations and stuff like that. So um, let me go grab my, Sam, could you grab my Twitter link and toss it in the, the chat also? Um, if you have questions, follow up or Mark, in your case, if you want to just jump on Zoom and just really rock through specifically what you're talking about, feel free to um, uh, to do that. That would be my pleasure to do as well. Uh, da, 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 da. What's your highest <coughs> ask for responsive WordPress? My, so um, that's a great question. I wish I had the link handy, but I don't. Um, my personal ask, I will share my screen again. Um, inside of, so inside of theme JSON, we have uh, the layout abilities where you can specify content, uh, the, the, con the, the, the size of the content width. And then if you choose like the wide alignment, you can set that on a kind of whatever basis. What I would like to see, and I'm going to just have some fun hacking this. Uh, we'll just say iPhone tablet. I would love to be able to like sort of, or maybe just we'll call this media query or uh, how do we spell it? I would love to, in theme JSON, have the ability to specify myself what I want those breakpoints that WordPress sort of arbitrarily, I think they're like 782 or something like that is one of them. Um, and maybe there's like an industry standard, but I like to kind of have better control over that uh, so I can line everything up and to be using the same one. I would love to see that capability built into theme JSON where you can, as a theme designer, say, I want to define the breakpoints for this and that. That would be maybe one of my biggest asks. Uh, in addition to sort of show height on mobile, I mean, I think, I, again, it could be, I could be wrong. Like even a toggle that says like hide on mobile, like, and I think a lot of like what Nick has done with um, block visibility, there's probably some nuggets there that they're talking about internally about pulling out, putting into WordPress core, uh, just to expand it some, maybe the ordering thing. Again, it's, you know, you have a column, a columns block with eight columns and, you know, the ability to order all of them a specific way on mobile and on what device it becomes convoluted quickly. So I know that we're kind of erring on the side of like slowly but surely. Um, let's see, Michael. Jim Valley reference to source set images. Yes. Yeah, the image thing itself is uh, up for conversation. Uh, kind of prior to more recent technology, if somebody uploaded a photo from their phone in like the media gallery, like it was like all or nothing where it would just, you know, output on the front end a 6,000 pixel <laughs> size image, which nobody wants uh, because that's probably 10 meg. And so you do that three or four times in a gallery and all of a sudden you you knock your page down and that's a huge Google um, sort of like a search console thing uh, or a page view thing. And so images, that's probably a talk in and of itself. How do we handle responsive images? Um, but I think Michael, to your point, um, there's definitely the use of, and I think WordPress has gotten better. I think there's creative use now of the the which image is being used and loaded uh, as well. <laughs> yeah, then Meg phone images. I hear you. Uh, doing a quick read, Rabin. I think a lot of, and I mean this wholeheartedly, a lot of what's coming or what's here in WordPress core already, I think it's all about discoverability. Uh, the team itself has admitted, Nick, even last week on build mode said the documentation is where we need to start like really getting uh, it out there and exposed uh, good, better documentation so people can understand how to use the things that are there or where to find how to change the things that are there. Uh, it's a lot of why we do stuff at build mode, why these workshops happen so we can uncover and expose sort of all of these ideas and options because we really want to see people building their own systems or using a system like Frost because I think the um, there's still a general consensus, oh, page builders are how I build it and they do it a certain way. It's better or it has options and WordPress doesn't. I think we're seeing that shift uh, slowly. I like to see it go quicker. 
but um, the shift towards people using WordPress core out of the box, because I think people are starting to realize, hey, this actually is further baked than we thought. And we can build our systems around this uh, and, and super excited about not having the overhead, the additional cost of a plugin or a page builder, uh, and just sort of the en entitlement to like build your own system and manage it yourself and uh, update it as necessary.